Anyway, let me officially kick off. Again, welcome uh, you all to our uh, Tuesday evening uh, time together as we are continuing to meditate on, uh, we call this Passion Week, a Holy Week, uh, when we reflect back some 2,000 years ago, there was a lot happening in the life in the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as uh, He was scheduled to be crucified, and so we call this uh, Holy Week or Passion Week, uh, or you know something of that of that nature, because of all that Jesus went through doing uh, this. Uh, period this period of, of time and um and so tonight is part of our time together uh we are uh, going to uh reflect on um the last words of our lord and savior jesus christ so uh, let me open uh open with a word of prayer oh lord oh god how excellent is your name lord over all the earth we thank you lord god for allowing us to reflect upon all that you went through uh, to make uh, life possible because your word says you came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And so we're thankful and grateful to you uh, for all that you've done. And so as we reflect upon uh, your time on this earth, we reflect upon your crucifixion and tonight, Lord God, as we meditate on the, the last final words that came out, of, uh, came out of your mouth, Lord God, we do understand that they're very significant. And so as we share and meditate on that this evening, we just pray your anointing. We pray your power, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, like the uh, Apostle Paul said, that I might know him and the fellowship of his sufferings and the power of the resurrection. So bless us, Lord God. We pray this evening for the sick, that they be healed. We pray this evening, Lord God, for the blind, that their eyes will be open. We pray this morning, Lord God, for those that are, are discouraged, that they will be encouraged. We pray, Lord God, for those that are that feel powerless, that they come become empowered because of the word of God. So bless us, Lord God, this evening as we share uh, with the people of God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, again, again this evening we are uh, going to we're going to look at the last words of of Jesus, and you know, often when I share about the last words of Jesus, you know, I can't help but reflect upon my uh, biological father that I had the privilege to be with him uh, during his last and final days on earth. And, uh, and there are some things that he, he shared with me that I will never ever forget. I mean, some things I'm not even privy uh, to discuss in this, in this Bible, uh, study this evening, but there are things that I, I will never ever uh, forget. But there were things that he wanted me to know, and so he he shared those things uh, with us. But one of the ways Christians have traditionally meditated on Good Friday is by reading and reflecting on the seven last words. Of Jesus, and I think they're really called uh, sayings of Jesus from the cross. Uh, in the in the book of in the book of Luke, uh, it is recorded in the in in, in, in the book of Luke is recorded uh, that uh, that the final words of Jesus before he died on the cross. It was now about the sixth hour uh, uh, upon this setting in Luke's uh, gospel, and there were darkness all over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sunlight failed and the curtains of the temple was torn in two, as the scripture said, then Jesus calling out with a loud voice said, 
Father, in your hands, I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last words. Now, there are great significance in the last words, the last scenes of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, the, the, the passage itself is a, is a moving account of Jesus uh, dying words when everything was said and done Jesus worked on the cross with all, was all but complete. And his proclamations, Father, in your hands, I commit my spirit. Uh, he, he finished the work. But the significance of Jesus' statement lies in a conversation he had with a religious leader about his role in God's great plan. So we're going to take a we're going to take a look at them uh, right now, and uh, as we, uh, we we look at all that the Lord, you know, has made has made available to us to reflect on. Again, any opportunity we have to re to reflect on the uh, what the Lord did and do these latter days are very important. Uh, notice before us in the in the book of St. Matthew's Gospel, uh, Matthew re uh, accounts for uh, one of the last words, again, or scenes of our Lord in, in Matthew 27, verse 46. It tells us about the, it was about the ninth hour when Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why do you think that Jesus had to say what he said? This is an open discussion this evening. Why do you think Jesus had to say what he said? Because he was in the flesh. He was, um, his humanity was crying out to his father. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. I like that one. Anyone else? I don't know. I guess... Um, the Lord turned his head away from him. Okay. Sin. Okay, you're uh, you you're you're on to something. You're on to something there. Uh, you want to elaborate further on that? Well, you know, um, God could not, you know, look at the sin, so I guess he turned his head away from it. And um because or he couldn't bear the fact that you know to see his son on this on the cross you know i don't know but i know that because he died for the sins of the world you know god had was to um turn his head away because it's something that had to happen yeah mm -hmm. very good anyone else want to comment on that my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Anyone else? Go right ahead. I think we're hitting all of the we're hitting all of the good parts. Anyone else? Well, well, one of the things that I want us to, um, you know, gain from this here is that. I'm sure we all have been in a situation where we somewhat felt that God has kind of left us out there by ourselves and feeling as if God is not really there when we know scripturally that, you know, that he was there. But, but in the physical sense, we somewhat felt that God was not there. Jesus throughout his life, his entire life, the presence of God was heavily upon his life. Every step, every move he made, you know, Jesus never laid hands on a person and they were not healed. He, he, he never spoke to a person and, 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 uh, and, uh, and encouraged them to give their life to the, to the Lord and they did not. 
that every event, everything that he did, it all worked out. When he, when he uh, uh, prayed over someone and commanded that the demons leave the, the, the person, when he, when he uh, called and told the, the evil spirits to go into the, uh, into the pigs and everything he said came to pass. I mean, he was, he was as accurate as accurate could be. He was as precise as uh, precision could be. But now we find him in a situation during this ninth hour, lifting up uh, the sins of the world. And because of God's righteousness, for the very first time, God could not look upon, God could not shine upon his son. So Jesus began to feel in the flesh, in the flesh, what is like to, to be absence of the presence of God. And so he altered these words. These are, again, final sayings. These are final where he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so again, uh, why, is it in, why is it so important for you and I to know this? is because we could very well be in a situation where we feel that God is not there, but we know he's there, but we feel in the flesh that God is not there. Jesus operated 100% in the spirit. We know what the scripture says that, that when, we, uh, when we walk in the spirit, that we would not fulfill the lust and the desires of our flesh. So Jesus stayed in the spirit. But when Jesus took on my sins and your sins and the, and the sins of all mankind, God could not look upon sin. Jesus was the sin offering for all mankind. All mankind, he was that sin offering for all mankind. That when Jesus say, your sins have been forgiven, they've been forgiven. Uh, it's not like they've almost were forgiven. No, they've been forgiven. Did you know that Jesus' uh, death on the cross not only took care of your 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 pre or your post sins, but it took care of every possible wrongdoing that you can ever commit. So when we make statements that is covered by the blood, it's covered by the blood. We can, we can really say that with confidence because it's covered by the blood, but, but this is what our Lord and Savior had to experience and deal with when he said this, these words to, to, to God that was with him everywhere he went. This was God that was uh, directing him every step of every step he took. This is what came out of his mouth. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Very, very powerful words coming from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Very very powerful work, but we're going to go on. We'll go on to the. We're going to go on to the next one, and we go and we go on to the next one. Then we see here. Can everybody see the screen? Uh, well, we we see here the next one, uh, recorded in Luke twenty three thirty four. Uh, the next scene is that Jesus says, "Father." Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. What were they doing? Quick question. What were they doing? I can't hear you. They're crucifying him. They're crucifying him? Um, when he, 
when he uses the word them, who is he re who is he referring to? The world. The world. The people um, who was the people who was um, torturing him. Very, very, very good. But do you think um, it was? Do you think it was just them? It was everyone who did not believe who he was. Yeah, yeah. But the but let's let's talk a little more about the them. Okay. Uh, this was everyone that rejected him, everyone that betrayed him, everyone that sinned against him, everyone that turned their back upon him, the hypocrites of the hypocrites, those that pretend to be something that they were not. So when we, when we look at these when we look at these words, it's very important for us to, if, if you look at them and you look at it in a very shadow sense, you'll miss it. But if you look at them from a universal standpoint, you will recognize that he's talking, when he said them, he's talking about the entire world, the entire world. Uh, he, he, he starts off by saying, um, you know, by, by, by him lifting up the sins of the world, he sees that God could not look upon sin. But in all, being a sin offering for the world, he offers himself as a sin offering to the world because he's taken on the sin of the world pre and post. That's pre and post, that's from the time we enter into the world to the time we end. It, he, he's taking on the sin, my sin and your sin of his entirety. So he tells, he tells God, he says, forgive them, forgive them, for, forgive Kelvin, uh, forgive Sharon, forgive Susie, forgive Johnny, forgive Bob. He's talking about us, the world, the entire world, that's the them. The them is the entire world. He says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Now let's 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 backtrack a little bit. When before we became Christians, um we were engaging in all kinds of stuff. Most of us had no idea we were doing things against uh, God's plan and, and, and purpose. Uh, we really didn't know what we were doing. And, and those that were crucifying Jesus, beating him to a bloody pole, had they known, really known, they knew who he claimed to be but they didn't quite believe he was who he said he was. And that's the part there. And so Jesus is saying that they don't really know. God, they've done all of this, but they really don't know. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And, and even in our modern day time, uh, uh, some of you probably have been out in the workplace and been involved with different things throughout this day. And, and there are people that may have mistreated you or have, 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 said, have, have said some things against you or whatever. And, uh, and we, we, we really have to say, you know, they don't know that they're picking on the child of God. Uh, you know, they don't know... Uh, what they are doing uh, to us that's creating tremendous pain or what whatever because they 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 can't they can't see it and many harm that uh that many of us do sometimes we we have no clue of how impactful it really is to those individuals and so Jesus recognized that and so on uh on our behalf 
he tells God, forgive them for they just, they just don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. They, they don't know that, uh, that, that they are sinning against the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. They, they don't get it. They don't get it, God. So please forgive them. You know, that, that, that word forgive, I, I'm learning um, in my mid, <laughs> in my mid years on this earth, how powerful that word is. You know, if, if I've been quick uh, to say, forgive me, I would have, I could have resolved a lot of conflicts that I've experienced in this life. Those, the, the word forgive me, it is so powerful. It, it is amazing. You can go up to a person that's on the verge of, 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 of taking their fist and shoving it in your mouth. And you can say words like, hey man, I'm so sorry, forgive me, man. I, I wronged you, I did you wrong, forgive me. And you can take a, a, such a fiery, hot, tempered situation and say, forgive me. And you can watch pressure levels go from the maximum to the, to the lowest just by simply saying, forgive me. So I think that's a page right there we can learn from Jesus. We can take away from Jesus of the power that Jesus exercised in telling God, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. I mean, there, there, there may be some people that name have come to your mind that maybe you've hurt uh, uh, or, or maybe they've hurt you, but just simply by you showing up and telling them, I forgive you uh, or, or forgive me, it has the same level of power. And so we see Jesus exercising that as he communicated, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Maybe one of two of you may have some examples of how you went before someone and sought their forgiveness. Maybe you have some examples of someone uh, have come to you and asked you to forgive them and you have seen the impact of being forgiven. Anyone want to share an example or, or something that you may have experienced? Go right ahead. Go ahead. Okay, moving, moving right along. So we look at the, the, uh, the third uh, saying of Jesus why he was on the cross. Again, you can you can picture in, in, in our modern day time, picture, picture being by a loved one that's on their deathbed, that any given minute, the physician or someone is gonna come in the room and pronounce them dead, okay? And so this is what our Lord uh, Jesus Christ says. He said, I tell you the truth, Today you will be with me in paradise. He says that in Luke 23, verse 43. This is what he says to the, to the thief on the cross. He tells a thief on the cross, someone that's been stealing, someone that has been living a, 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 a wicked life. He says, Today you will be with me in paradise. Okay. What do you think that says? What do you think that says about Jesus to tell a, a, a thief, uh, someone that's been living a very reckless life that holds a conversation with Jesus and asks Jesus a question? This was a question. If any of you have your Bible available, I want you to uh, grab a uh, hold to it. And, and if someone can read Luke 23, verse 42, I believe verse 42, if someone could turn that and read that for me. He said, I tell you the truth. 
Today, you will be with me in paradise. What does that tell you? What does that tell you about Jesus on his deathbed, having these brief words? Uh, and, and again, these words that he's saying, he's barely getting them out of, out of his mouth because you've been around someone that's uh, minutes away from expiring. And so every word that comes out of their mouth is, is words barely that they're ba barely able to alter, but they get them out of mouth. What does this say? What does this say to you? Anyone get that, that, that verse for me yet? Yes, sir. Go, go right ahead, madam. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Okay. Let's so, say Luke 23, 42. Yeah. So, so again, you see someone coming, someone um, on the cross next to Jesus. Uh, Jesus was uh, on both sides of the cross. There were criminals and, 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 uh, and bad individuals. And one of them heard enough about Jesus to say on his, on his, on his deathbed, he says, would you remember me? And Jesus' reply was, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. What does that tell us about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? What does that tell us, uh, someone talk to me, what does it tell us about Jesus that's willing to make a statement like that on his deathbed? What does it tell us about him? Someone talk to me. Uh, he, he's a forgiving, he, he forgives and he's a merciful God and he will, he will pardon you if you ask him. That's right. <laughs> very good, very good. Yeah, just that easy and he doesn't like well you you know you're sorry rascal uh you know you behave like this you did this you did that you know you don't you know you don't deserve this or that he he did not do that he, he certainly could have but that's not the that's not the type of savior that uh that we have in our lives uh even down to the end uh but there is something what, what do you think it inspired him about Jesus so great? I mean, obviously he's, he's there, he's seeing everything happen. What, what do you think inspired him uh, uh, so greatly that he, that he saw for himself, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. I better go for it. I better make my, take my chances and go for it. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. He obviously had to see something so convincing to push him to that point. Any thoughts? Go right ahead. Any thoughts? Okay, moving right along. This is a, a this is a very important uh, piece here because. Again, Jesus on his deathbed, uh, about to die. Uh, this is it. But there is a, Jesus had a mother. We know of Jesus' mother. We know Jesus' mother's name was Mary. She was there. Um, she was there watching her son be crucified. And this is what Jesus says to his mother. Dear woman, here's your son, and here is your mother. When Jesus recognized his mother standing near the cross with the apostle John, he entrusted his mother's well-being to John's responsibility. He, he makes sure he made sure that his mother would be, would be taken care of. I call you back. Yeah, okay. yeah. We, 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 know the, we know the scripture tells us 
to honor our mothers and our fathers for our days on earth would be long. And so we see Jesus wasting no time recognizing that it's, it's down to the wire. It, it, it is down to the wire. And he must take care, must make sure that his mother, his mother, physical well-beings will be taken care of. So he entrusted her, uh, entrusted uh, John to be the one responsible for his precious mother. So that must tell us something, you know, you got a um, mother around, you want to do everything you can, mother and father for that sake. You want to be do everything you can to honor them and uh, care for them and uh, provide for them because there is something special. In, in doing so, we can see here that we're taking a page out of Jesus' book because it's going down. I mean, in, in minutes later, uh, it's going to be over, you know, with him being in the physical body that he's in. And so it's going to be up to individuals that are in the physical body on earth to take care of his mother. So, so he takes care of that. Any, any comments on that? Anyone want to comment on, on Jesus taking care of his mother? Any other comments on that? Okay. Now we... Now we go to uh, the fifth uh, saying of Jesus. And he says, I am thirsty. What does that tell us about Jesus? I am thirsty. Come on, someone come. That is human. That is human. Very good. Very good. Very good. You, you, you took care of that one. That's a good one. That he's actually human. That's right. He, it, you know, we can view him for being a lot of things, but the, the mere fact after going through what he went through, uh, a, 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 a brutal day of being at this point in Jesus' life, he had already been beaten to a bloody pulp. And he's tired, he's exhausted. He seeks for some water. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm thirsty. And, uh, and by him making that statement, we see prophecy being fulfilled. You know, one of the neat things about the, the Old Testament, the Old Testament prophesies about Jesus coming into the earth, prophesied by of, of what Jesus would do. But when we go into the, the, the New Testament, we see those prophecies being fulfilled. And so, David, in his writing of, of the book of Psalm, David uh, has an opportunity to, uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, to prophesy about Jesus as well. And this is what David prophesied. He says, they put gal in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst for my thirst. And, and so again, it was partly prophesied that this day would come. Again, there, 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 there are many that uh, prophesied, he was wounded for my transgression. He was, he was bruised for my neck iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his stripes, I am healed. Those were those are prophecies that 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 occurred thousands of years before Jesus came into the earth. Before this was actually manifest, so he says, "I am thirsty." 
He letting us know I was I was in the flesh. I was in the physical flesh. Uh, you know, the, the spirit does not get thirsty for physical water. So he's in the in 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 the flesh. Let us let us graduate on to the six. Uh, the sixth saying of Jesus, and I I I I I I love this one here because uh, this one here says uh, uh, says quite a bit. So we find in John nineteen thirty that Jesus again just uh, just minutes away from it all being over. You know, when when I was by my my my, my biological father's side uh, uh, before he he passed away, uh, it took a lot of effort um, for him to even say my name. You know, I get him to Kelvin. You know, again, a lot of effort uh, to uh, to say what he wanted to say. You know, uh, uh, to me and. Uh, you know, he was like, you know, where's your brother or where, you know, do you think it took a while for him to get it out there? So I I can only imagine that when when, when Jesus was pushing uh, these things out, you know, it was not it was not easy for him to uh, to do that. So when Jesus said it is finished, you know, it is finished. The work his father had sent him to do, which was to teach the gospel, to perform miracles, and to achieve reconciliation for his people was complete, was complete. The, the, there was, a, there was a, a, a debt that had to be paid uh, for the sin of mankind. Uh, debt had to be paid. That debt was that debt was great, but when Jesus finished everything, that he got a statement that said paid in full. I, I don't know about you all, but uh, you know it, it's great to pay off a car and get the get a statement from the bank saying uh, paid in full. Here's your title. You know it's it's, it's great to uh, get a notice from a financial. Uh, institution that says, you know, we we did an audit and we went through the files and we discovered that we miscalculated um, how much you owed us. And here is a check. Your your account is paid in full. Now, I know uh, that uh, you may not get excited often about certain things, but I think there are certain things when you hear the word paid in full, it it does something for you. <laughs> it, 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 it does something, something significant for you. But I want you to know what Jesus did, no man can replace this paid in full. I mean, you got a, you got a, uh, a statement that says that everything that you have done against God I have settled the account. I've taken care of everything. You owe nothing. Your balance is zero. In the in the Old Testament uh, era, they had to offer up certain livestock for doing certain uh, sins and uh, certain levels of, of disobedience or whatever. And there are certain times of the year certain sacrifices were made uh, as a result of sin. Well, let me tell you, you, you no longer have to go out and chop the heads off of your chickens and take their blood. You no longer have to do anything because Jesus was the last blood sacrifice. The scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Jesus was it. There's no more physical blood sacrifices. Uh, now he's interested in us being a living sacrifice. The, the Bible says in Romans 12, uh, verses 1 and 2, he says, I beg of you, uh, brethren, 
that you present your body a living sacrifice. Okay. He, he's not interested in any uh, dead sacrifices. He's not interested in any risk cutting and, and showing blood and what. No, that's not because Jesus was the final, final sacrifice. The reason what makes him the final sacrifice, because everything that was needed to be done to bring us back into relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he took care of it. Every issue that God had with, with people or whatever, he fixed it. It was, it was right here that Jesus finally said, uh, uh, whatever they have done against you, is over. I've taken care of it. It's been fulfilled. The debt of sin has been paid in full. Amen. That need to make somebody say hallelujah. That should encourage somebody to say glory to God because it's been paid in full. It's been paid completely in full. You owe nothing. You owe nothing because you can stand before God. The scripture says justify just as if you never sinned. It's all because Jesus fixed it once and for all. It is finished. It's been paid in full. You don't have to worry about it anymore because everything is already covered under the blood of Jesus, under the blood of Jesus. Any final thoughts on it is finished? Any final thoughts on that? Go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. Don't be bashful. <laughs> when just, I just see how amazing it is that, you know, those sinners that were on the cross next to Jesus, you know, letting us know that regardless of how badly we sin or whatever, you know, we have done in this life that, you know, God is able to forgive us for all of that so that we can, you know, be with him. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Go right ahead, please. This is a, a very emotional time of a year for me because as Christ draw closer to the cross, this time of year, I follow the steps. You know, I can imagine today or yesterday, he went into the temple and turned over the money changers table. And then I follow him as he goes to the upper room and eat the Passover. And then as he get closer to Thursday, when he's arrested and on up to the crucifixion, I kind of visualize this every time this time of year. And this is very emotional for me because this is about our Lord and our Savior Christ dying on the cross. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Anyone else? Go right ahead. I think I understand better how a, a, a lot of times people who commit some of the heinous crimes go to prison and they, they come out, they're, they're ministers and preachers and I, I guess they can go from experience and relate experiences and things like that that uh, and they're able to um, get a message over to uh, other people who may be going down that line or going that way and dissuade them from doing it because of their experiences and their relationship with God or with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else? Go right ahead. Nice, 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 nice. Then we uh, go on to the, the last final words. Uh, I, I wonder uh, if any of you on the line uh, can share um, that you know that you're comfortable sharing. Maybe you were with a loved one. Maybe you're with a, a friend or someone, and they expired, meaning they died in your arms or in your presence. And maybe you you heard some 
a final statement or a final word. Any anyone care uh, to share that with us? How precious that is, you know, to to be to be with a loved one and hear their final words. And and and, and in many cases, it usually is something very, you know, very encouraging. I remember my mother sharing with me that uh, when my when my grandfather uh, passed away, he told her to uh, you know to take care of her her brother, um, and so that was something that was you know very heavy on her heart. As many challenges as her brother took her through, it was very you know, it was something that she never, you know, she never forgot. Uh, any other thoughts? Go right ahead. So as we approach Jesus' last and final saying, Jesus says, and this is very important, very important, and we're going to jump into this a, a little bit here. He says, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. And Jesus willingly gave his life. King James talked about it. He's willingly uh, gave up the ghost. Now, here's the tricky part of this one here. Who killed Jesus? No one. Okay. Christ gave up. He gave his life. Okay. And you know, most people don't understand that God orchestrated this whole thing, you know, the way to go to have Judas to betray him and 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 the soldiers. God was involved with the whole thing, and Christ had to die. For us so he gave his life up no one killed him yeah so uh how many have heard uh oh the jews killed him oh pharaoh killed him oh judas killed him uh, uh i mean how many how many times we've we've, we've heard that but let's read the scripture very careful Look at that latter part. Jesus willingly gave his life. <laughs> so, again, we know that even on Jesus' deathbed, that he still had control of heaven and that he still could call, uh, 12, I believe, 12 legions of angels, multitudes of angels with, with just a few words out of the mouth of our Lord and Savior could have came there and cleaned everybody up, wiped everybody out and rescued our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So notice here, uh, he willingly gave his life. At this point, Jesus had been beaten to a bloody pulp. You may have seen the uh, the movie, The Passion of the Christ. You have uh, may have seen movies about the, the crucifixion. But let me give you a clear picture that there is no rating uh, that would allow for uh, a, a accurate view of Jesus' crucifixion. Our eyes and our stomach and our conscience would not be able to tolerate it. You know, like even today, I'm I'm very sensitive. Uh, uh, I have a difficult time watching movies with you know, massacres, movies with 
you know, heads being cut off and people being sawed up or whatever. I, I'm amazed that, you know, that some of you can handle it. I can't handle it. You know, I, I'm, I often have to leave the room because I just don't have the, I don't have the stomach for that. You know, I'm, I guess that's why I'm not in the medical field, but some folks can handle the blood and all of that stuff. But, you know, God bless you on that. But that is not for, it's not for me. But Jesus' death was like, it was like a masochist. I mean, you know, where they were uh, 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 pulling skin off of his body and, and blood was pouring all over the, over the place. And, and, um, and the, the, the beating was, it was like inhumane what they did, you know, what they did to him. Uh, but the scripture says, after all of that, Jesus still had some final words to come out of his mouth. And these final words were, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. So Jesus faced this incredible task of laying down his life as a ransom for the world. This task was traumatic and overwhelming, but Jesus accepted it. Check this out. He accepted it willingly. After hanging on the cross for three hours, Jesus finally gave up his own life. He was not helpless at the hands of those who crucified him. He alone had the authority to end his life. And we find in, uh, in, in Matthew 20, 28, Jesus says, the son of man came to give his life as a ransom for many. So we see the crucifixion was Jesus' plan, and it was his plan for our life. It was, it was his plan of before the creation. He's the lamb who was slain, the Bible says, from the foundation of the world. His Again, his, his, his death and him being a sin offering took care of your pre and your post. From the Revelation 13, 8 says that he is the lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. But Jesus' death is still death. And it is and it's still an abomination through Jesus, though Jesus submitted, this doesn't mean everything was fine. The author of life was murdered by evil men, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 23. But Jesus yielded to the evil and injustice because he knew he was really in charge amen he was really in charge and you know that that is something for us that in the midst of all that we have read and that we have learned about his crucifixion to see all of that take place with the understanding of knowing that he was still in charge you know he told his disciples he said this got to happen they they felt it did not have to happen but had they not known that in order for Jesus, in order for things to be uh, better for us from a spiritual standpoint, Jesus had to leave this earth. You know, there are some people that said, Jesus, if you're, if you're only here in bodily form like you were some 2,000 years ago, this would not have happened. But Jesus is saying to us that we have him every day of our life. We have him everywhere we go. We have him whatever part of the world that we may find ourselves in. We have him just as if he was here in physical form. But all of that was set up because of his death on the cross, on his death on the cross. And we know that 
The story does not end here. In fact, the story only gets better. We, you know, we can never stop at the death of Jesus because if if the, if, if Jesus died, then we would be we would have an opportunity to go and visit the place where he died, and that some remains of his body could possibly still be there even today. But we know if we go and visit the tomb of Jesus, that there will not be a body there because we know the scripture uh, leads us to understand that it was late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, that our Lord and Savior rose from the grave. So I couldn't close this, uh, this, this time out this evening with this last statement that he gave up the ghost and he's, he's dead on the cross. I had to take him off the cross and remind us, us all the reason why we can claim power is because we serve a risen Savior. The, the reason why we can claim victory is because we serve a, a, a God that demonstrated victory by raising Jesus from the grave. And, and because of that, we can claim it. Because of that, we can embrace it with our heart, soul, and mind. When we're believing in the, the power of God to heal and deliver and set people free, we're, we're embracing that same power that pulled Jesus right out of that grave. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Trust uh, you were encouraged this evening as we have we, we reflected on our Savior. We reflected on his last sayings that came out of his mouth. We reflected on those, those final uh, moments of the life of someone that we hold to so dearly someone that we've committed our very life, our very heart to, uh, and we've heard some of the things. And so I want to encourage you that if you go through the remaining of the week, you know, meditate on some of these, some of these sayings and, and, and allow the Lord to use you because these things are still practical for us, even in this 2021 20, era that we're in. They're not obsolete, but they are, they are, they are saints that still ministering to the world. So again, thank you all so much for tuning in. We're going to close out in a word of prayer, but first I just want to see if anyone got any final thoughts that you'd like to leave with us, then I'll be back to you to close you out in prayer. Any final thoughts? Go right ahead. And you know, I got to say that when they came to get Christ in the garden of Gethsemane and they said to him, when Christ said to them, whom do thou seek it? And when he said, Jesus, when they said Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says, then they fell backwards. That would have been a real point that I would have took that this is the son of God because the power of his words knocked them down. And the Bible said, when they picked themselves up off the ground and Judas were with them, you know, I just I just think that this is just a powerful time of year, as well as his birth in December. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, appreciate you. Pre appreciate you sharing that. Uh, great. Uh, that's a great thought there. Great thought there. Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, going once. Uh, anyone else? I mean, there's some good. There's some good stuff. Uh, Go right ahead, Sister Gibson. Yes, Pastor Baker. Yes, um, it's reflecting, I know every year you have this teaching and each time when you go through it, it's just a new revelation, you know, a brand new revelation, especially the time that we're living in right now, you know, we can, and we think about the cross going through this, the Holy Week here this week, during this pandemic now we can think about, you know, reflect on his love and that his love is the same, you know, he's the same yesterday, today and forevermore that his love is everlasting. And I think that's what gives us hope that he's the same yesterday, today and forevermore, amen. 
Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amen. Anyone else? Go right ahead. All righty. Uh, before I close out in prayer, I want to invite you to our Good Friday uh, virtual uh, gathering uh, this uh, this Friday at 6 p.m. Yes, people, God, at 6 p.m., not 7, not 5, but 6 p.m. Uh, this, this Friday, we will uh, come together to have our Good Friday, our, our partaking of the Lord's Supper, together as we reflect on uh, Jesus' uh, uh, death, uh, continue to reflect on Jesus' death and uh, what it, you know, what that means, what that really means to us. Uh, and we'll have a, a brief devotion. And, um, and we got a lot of uh, gifts that we want to give out. We got some gift cards that we want to give out. Uh, so we we got this little uh, this little wheel uh, that we'll be spinning, and um, so we're gonna have some fun uh, as we ramp down. But want to encourage you to uh, get your uh, your juice and your bread, and uh, prepare to invite some other folks to join us in our good our Good Friday Good Good Friday service. Again, want to encourage you all if you know you're able to. Uh, set your alarm clock to get up at 6.30 in the morning. You'll have an opportunity to join uh, Sister Gibson and uh, several others that are just faithful at praying uh, for the church and each other. And those of you that are on the line, I want to encourage you that, uh, that, that every day you are being prayed for, you may not have... Uh, Notice why things are better, why you're able to deal with a lot of issues, because somebody is praying for you. And so we want to encourage you uh, to join us if you can uh, at 630 in the morning. If you have not downloaded the church app, I want to encourage you to do so. And it's real simple. You just go in the app store, be it uh, an Apple or Android, and just look for uh, TWFC Pines. And you'll see the church logo there. You just click that and, and download the app into your phone. And if you go under announcements, once you get the app loaded, you'll see a, a, a week-long devotion, a week-long devotion for, uh, for this whole Passion Week. And that will uh, provide you some additional time of meditating and reflecting on this, on this weekend. Again, the goal is get everything you can get out of this week, uh, because as you move on, it's going to make you a, a, a better person in the Lord for, for, for being able to go deeper in him and, and allowing God to speak and communicate uh, with you in a great and a special way. And then on Sunday, we have our uh, Resurrection Sunday. And uh, we're looking to do a, a, a broadcast uh, through uh, through Facebook, through YouTube, and through Zoom on uh, on um, on Sunday at 11 a.m. Resurrection Sunday. So trust you will join and just uh, prepare to be a part of all of the great things that God desires to do with each of us. And again, want to encourage you all to uh, continue to look to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With that being said, I might have Brother Edward Hill, if he's able to, uh, to close us out in prayer. Very, very dear brother, very dear brother of mine. I love him dearly and uh, want, want to continue to keep his dear mother in prayer. Brother Ed, can you give us an update on mom? Yes, yes. Father, we got, we, we're glad to gather on your holy week and to sit down at your feet and at Jesus' feet and to think and reflect about the things that he's he done and he's going to do for us this week. Father, most people don't really understand the real, the real, real meaning and what really happened here. Christ actually was beaten beyond recognition and he actually died on the cross with nails in his hand. And he did it for us, Father. And we thank you for your, all your blessings. We thank that he came and died for us, that 
took the weight off our shoulder, the sin weight, which we could have never lifted. And we thank you, Father. We thank you. As we go forward in this week, Father, as he go toward the cross, we will follow. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you all. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, Sister Andres, Brother Hill, uh, Sister Gibson, uh, Brother, 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 Brother Bobby. And uh, I know I am missing a few others. I think the rest of you have, have already signed off. But again, thank you all so much for joining us uh, this evening. And we pray God bless, will bless you and bless you richly. Have a blessed evening and good night.